Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you this portrait of Colin Firth as Mr. Darcy in the older version of the Pride and Prejudice movie based on the famous novel by Jane Austen. I'm just moving it around a little bit so that you can see all of it. It was done mostly in charcoal with a bit of black colored pencil. Let's get to it. The size of the paper is 12 times 17 inches, so another large portrait. Not quite as big as the previous one, uh, but it will be done on a similar size and in a similar style with a slightly darker background. Uh, this was a commission portrait and uh, my customer requested something that kind of looks like uh, a uh, romantic period styled portrait but it was supposed to be in black and white in charcoal and as I've already mentioned this is uh, from the, the reference photo was taken from a movie still from the movie Pride and Prejudice it's a slightly older version where Colin Firth played Mr. Darcy. It's thought by many to be the best version of that movie or of that adaptation of the book. There was also a slightly newer version with Kira Knightley and I thought that this newer version was also very very good. I think that both adaptations were actually quite excellent. Um, now let me say a few words about what I'm doing. I started out with a simple sketch done mostly in a combination of a graphite pencil and a black colored pencil and after that I started working with my charcoal pencils. Most of the work is going to be done in charcoal but as I've already mentioned in the intro I'm going to be using a black colored pencil as well. Um, if you're wondering why I like to use a black colored pencil, well, I like the precision and the control I have with a black colored pencil. Charcoal is a little bit more messy and a little bit more random, and it has some beneficial properties, it has some advantages of its own, but when I combine it with a black colored pencil, I find that this type of uh, this type of uh, combination of mixed media is what suits my style best and I mostly use a black colored pencil for working on some details and textures I did the hair mostly with the combination of charcoal pencils a medium one and the soft one and his hair is kind of easy to draw I think because it's all curly and messy here so and plus it's pretty dark it was pretty dark in my reference photo I'm, I'm gonna put the reference photo in the link uh, in the description so that you can check it out for yourself after I did a bit of work on the hair I started putting down some charcoal powder to do the background and I thought that the background had to be kinda of dark but not too dark because I wanted the main subject to stand out and I'm going to do a similar thing that I did with the previous portrait I'm gonna make some parts of the portrait stand out against the background with a little bit more contrast while in other places there will be less contrast and it will almost be like a vignette with some parts fading into the darker area so once I lay down a ton of charcoal, and this is obviously another dark uh, drawing with a lot of darker values and a lot of charcoal powder flying around. Once I did that, I started spreading that with a combination of brushes and my fingers. I use my fingers to push the charcoal in and to create some areas of darker value. And I push the charcoal around with brushes uh, to create a slightly more even 
uh, background with slightly more even transitions towards the f uh, from the areas of darker value to the areas of lighter value. And of course, uh, when you work like that, uh, when you work work like that, when you start with the with a hair and do a little bit of background sometimes it can appear that the background is a little bit too dark and then I can use my kneaded eraser as I'm doing here to lift up a little bit of charcoal and even though it looks messy at first I can always go back with a brush and smooth things out uh, just so that it's light enough for the hair to stand out against the background. But like I said, in this particular part of the paper, I didn't want to create too much contrast. I want the face to stand out, and I want the face to be the part of the drawing which will immediately draw the focus of the viewer. So that's where we're going to have the most contrast and texture. I'm not going to make the hair too detailed. I just want to make it look curly and messy so that it looks realistic enough. Uh, here I'm starting to work on the facial features and I zoomed in a little bit so that you can see some more uh, some of the uh, details. I'm working on the eye on the left. And I'm doing this with a medium charcoal pencil. As I've already mentioned, I'm using charcoal pencils. And these are Warrison woodless charcoal pencils. I prefer woodless charcoal pencils because they're easier to sharpen. You can use any brand, it doesn't really matter. Charcoal is charcoal. But in addition to these woodless charcoal pencils, I also like to use vine charcoal. I already used a bit of vine charcoal on the background, but I'm going to use a little bit more of it on the face once I start shading. But right now, I'm drawing some of the details around the eyes and already making some suggestions of the shape of the eyes and eyelids and maybe even the placement of the eyelashes and things like that so I'm first going to put down some of the detail and some of the darker areas and then I'm going to do some larger shading shading of the larger areas of the face and then I'm going to go back to working on the details and textures I'm drawing the iris of the eye and the pupil in the middle is of course going to be one of the darkest uh, bits in the whole drawing so I'm going to use a bit of soft charcoal pencil for that part and there's also going to be a reflection now the light is usually coming from above but it can come more from one side than the other. In this case, it's coming a little bit more from the right side than the left. So the reflections and the highlights are going to be moved ever so slightly to the are going to be moved ever so slightly to the to the right. So I shaded the rest of the eyeball using the black colored pencil because I wanted to prevent myself from making it too dark and too messy, which sometimes happens when you work in charcoal. Of course, even when you work in charcoal, there's always a way to take away a bit of value and to clean up some of the edges if you find that you weren't accurate enough. But I find that a black colored pencil, when combined with charcoal, helps a lot. Now, if you're a purist and if you want to use only charcoal, it's doable. I've done many drawings using nothing but charcoal. 
but I just find that using mixed media can be more convenient and more fun in many ways. Some people also like to combine graphite pencils with charcoal. I find that a black colored pencil tends to work a lot better in combination with charcoal than, than a graphite pencil. And it's just a regular black colored pencil. I think the brand is Primo even though you can use any brand. I've also used Polychromos and some others but it depends on what I have lying around. It doesn't. I, I don't really care too much about about the brands. So I moved on to the other eye. I'm doing the same thing, leaving a little bit of white space for the highlight, and then kind of working towards the lighter area, narrowing it down a little bit, refining its shape, and then shading the rest of the eyeball and the rest of the eye and the area around the eye, so that the highlights would stand out and so that they would appear shiny and reflective. You can also see that I'm using my Tutilian for drawing some of the details around the nose. Now the thing about the nose is that it's a very three-dimensional part of the face. It's kind of sticking out. Some people have larger noses than others. Colin Firth has a, I would say, uh, a fairly small nose, not a very large nose, and um, regardless of the shape of the nose there are some smoother transitions there and it can it, it's often easy to make the nose too wide or too narrow that's why I like to draw some of its shapes, uh, so, some of its uh, lines uh, by using a uh, totillion uh, that way I can create some lighter lines which I can later fix more easily and also because the uh, Tortillion doesn't create these clean edges the way that a pencil does it allows me to define these smoother transitions a lot more easily than I would with a pencil a pencil is more appropriate for some of the cleaner edges like for example uh, here uh, between the lips or under the jaw, under the chin, uh, around the eyelids and some of the other parts of the face. So I, here I moved on to the mouth and the lip area and I'm doing a bit of shading on the lips. Now you'll notice an interesting thing when you're shading different parts of the face. For example, if you shade the lips first and then you start shading the rest of the face, the lips will at first appear a lot darker than they ought to be. Um, but when you shade the rest of the face, they, they, will, they will start to appear lighter and lighter as you're shading the area around them. This is, I believe, what uh, artists refer to as value interaction. And it just means that um, an area of your drawing can appear dark if there's something very light to it. And it can, uh, it can appear lighter if there's something darker next to it. So here I decided to move on with the shading and shade some of the larger areas of the face, establish some of the larger relationships between the lighter and darker uh, parts of the face and I did this with vine charcoal so don't worry about these lines it this was done in vine charcoal that's why it's so easy to modify and it's so easy to move this charcoal around so I won't create any nasty texture if I do this with vine charcoal. Vine charcoal doesn't really stick to the surface of the paper as much and especially if you're using a softer brush and you push, don't push too hard you can actually move it around very easily and you can also add a little bit more here and there when needed and this way you can see that I've already established some of the relationships between larger areas of lighter and darker value and this is important because uh, this helps us show the volume and the overall shape of the face. So this is how you achieve likeness by showing the topography of the face. And you can't do that without establishing these 
relationships between larger areas of lighter and darker value. Now to do this, when you're working on a large portrait like this, I'm going to give you a few tips. If you have a reference photo in front of you, it's a good idea to zoom out a little bit so that you can see it as, as if you were looking at, uh, at a distance or squint your eyes a little bit. And another thing you can do if you're looking at it on your computer, you can also increase the contrast a little bit and that way you can really see where the lightest lights and the darkest darks are and what the relationships between the lighter and darker areas are supposed to look like. Another thing that you need to do when you're working on a larger portrait like this is you need to step away from your own paper, from your own drawing. You need to step away and you need to reassess whether you've placed these larger areas of lighter and darker value correctly. Now if you look at the face now, I still haven't achieved likeness. I'm still kind of... Uh, I, ha I have achieved likeness to a certain degree but there's still uh, some room for improvement and you can st see that I'm still fidgeting around uh, with some parts of the drawing like for example around the eyes and this transition between the uh, the eyebrow area and the nose area which can be a little bit tricky and the width of the nose and the nostrils and things like that so these are just some of the smaller adjustments but I think I've already established some of the larger more important things but the details are also important um, and the textures the smaller textures are an additional touch which adds a lot to the realism of your drawing but without establishing these larger areas and without shading these larger areas and putting down those uh, and establishing those larger relationships between areas of lighter and darker value you can't really achieve likeness and that's why this step is so important but you can see now as I'm uh, making some progress with the shading um, I'm starting to refine some of the smaller parts of the face and it's starting to look better and better but I'm simply working on top of the initial shading that I've already done and I've mostly done that, done that with vine charcoal and with brushes and you can see now that I'm doing most of the work with this black colored pencil and I use that black colored pencil to refine some of the areas I shaded initially with charcoal but also to give it a little bit of texture. When I use a black colored pencil, uh, it allows me to control the amount of texture I will create on the surface of the skin. Because with charcoal I have to do a lot of blending, and with blending a lot of that texture disappears. And with a black colored pencil, it really allows me to draw some of the finer details and some of these finer textures to make it look really like human skin without much effort actually because the pencil reacts to the surface of the paper and it creates some na texture naturally so it allows me to imitate the texture of the skin um, without actually putting in too much work. I've also done a little bit of work on the hair trying to give it a little more structure and make it look a little more three-dimensional uh, but I'll get back to that a bit later. Right now you can see that I'm adding some more details on these bangs and on these curls lying on his forehead because I want the hair to look more natural that's why I'm adding some of these smaller finer flyaway hairs here and there. And you'll also notice that I always have a piece of glassine paper under my hand to prevent smudging uh, even though they're there will always be some smudging when you're working with charcoal that's completely unavoidable because charcoal is a messy medium that's one of its advantages and disadvantages at the same time it's very quick to work with it's very easy to work with but at the same time things can get pretty messy especially when you're working on a darker piece a darker drawing and you have to lay down a lot of charcoal and you have a lot of charcoal powder, a lot of that charcoal residue lying around. I zoomed in a little bit again so that you can see some more work that I'm doing with a black colored pencil. You can see how I'm 
refining some of the edges and um, refining some of the textures and some of the smaller details one of the things you'll notice is for example when you're shading with a charcoal pencil normally you shade holding the pencil under a certain angle you shade in one, one direction and that tends to create a, kind of a linear texture where there are a lot of parallel lines which kind of spoil the overall impression of realism and what you can do is you can often go over, with, over that with a black colored pencil uh, approaching the shading from a slightly different angle slightly different direction and that way uh, by cross hatching you get a lot more realistic looking skin I don't know if I'm making sense but I'm doing my best to try to explain the drawing process as best as I can um, because some of these things can't really be explained you just have to uh, you just have to try these things for yourself and test it out for yourself and then a lot of the things that I'm saying will probably make a lot more sense now these videos which I post here on YouTube are quite a bit shorter uh, than the than the actual raw footage for example this drawing took about three three and a half hours I think maybe a little bit more I'm not really sure uh, but I compressed it into a half an hour video like the previous one but if you want to see longer videos where you can observe my drawing technique in real time and where you can hear a lot more narration and explanations you can always go to my patreon and you can check out some additional content there if not you can just uh, browse through my videos here on YouTube and you can find lots of content the tool that I'm using now is an eraser so it's not a white pencil it's an eraser it's a Kohinoor eraser and a pencil it can be sharpened and it allows you for a little bit more precision when you're erasing and right now I'm going back after I've done most of the shading I'm going back and I'm just erasing a little bit of the value here and there in some parts of the face that need to be lighter so basically what I'm doing now is negative drawing instead of uh, drawing darker lines I'm taking away value so we use pencils uh, to draw darker lines and darker shapes and erasers to draw lighter shapes and lighter lines so an eraser is a drawing tool not just a tool for correcting mistake, mistakes uh, so here I have to move on with the rest of the hair to finish the hair on the right and the ear and things like that and after that I can finally move on to the rest of the background and uh, uh, the rest of the portrait uh, the clothes and the jacket and things like that again I'm gonna lay a ton lay down a ton of charcoal powder spread it around using a combination of a brush and my finger my finger tends to make things a little bit darker than a brush but the brush tends to blend things more evenly so if I want to create that smoother look I'm gonna use I'm gonna use that larger brush Um, here I'm finishing the hair and I decided to add a little bit more of that soft charcoal pencil to make the hair a bit darker and I also felt like this uh, right side of the background needed to be a bit darker as well and like I said I wanted to create uh, somewhat of a painterly look like a, like maybe an 18th century 19th century uh, painting and I want the so he has a slightly darker jacket I want the corners of the I, I want the lower parts of that jacket to kind of fade into the darker areas around the corners if that makes sense so I want only the central part of the portrait to be well defined in terms of contrast with the background 
and uh, the lower parts of the portrait are going to be a little bit less defined. Uh, so here I'm still uh, finishing the hair, refining the hair a little bit. I'm adding a bit of areas of, of dark, darker value using a soft charcoal pencil because I felt like the hair looked a little bit too flat in some areas. Now th there really isn't too much detail in my reference photo either but I just wanted to give it a little bit more structure and depth. And uh, finally I uh, added a few touches of, uh, of that pencil eraser to draw some highlights and to make that hair look a little bit more curly and a little bit more realistic. And I added some flyaway hairs around the edges and then I decided to put down some finishing touches on the face. And after that it was time to move on to the to his jacket or whatever it is that he's wearing. This is going to be fairly simple. I put down a little bit of compressed charcoal from my charcoal pencils, a little bit of vine charcoal to make some softer transitions and I use a bit of charcoal powder around the corners because I wanted to create some blurry edges there. And then I moved on to his, um, I don't know what this is, um, and I also added some of these darker details around the lapels. And then in the, in the middle I have to move, move on to his uh, shirt and that uh, scarf that he's wearing around the neck. So this part is a little bit complex because uh, there are a lot of these folds. But I'm going to try to simplify it a little bit. I'm just going to shade this area a little bit more and then I'm going to uh, create some suggestions of darker areas uh, in between these folds. So when you're drawing these folds, when you're drawing clothes, I, I find that a tutillion is a very useful tool because all you need to do is put down a little bit of charcoal or graphite, whichever it is that you're working with and then you just push that around with a tutillion and that way you can make some suggestions of folds in the clothes that look fairly natural but one of the things that I often have to do is I have to go back and uh, go over some areas with a black colored pencil to add a little more depth and contrast because in between those folds in between some of them there is going to be a little bit more shadow and in order for the lighter parts to stand out you have to create these darker areas. So once I did that shading you can also see that I used that uh, pencil eraser to go over some of the lighter areas of that scarf and I just uh, did my best to refine the edges and shade this complex area without actually spending too much time on it. So just a few suggestions of folds here and there uh, will do the trick. You don't have to make it look exactly like the reference photo. Um, and here I'm moving on to the right side of his jacket. Again, I'm going to do most of the work with a medium charcoal pencil and a bit of vine charcoal to help blend that in and move that around and then just a little bit of charcoal powder around the edges and that should be it eventually I decided to sign my drawing in the lower left corner even though I don't know if you can see it because my camera wasn't adjusted properly and the drawing is fairly long so I couldn't really zoom out. But there it is. I moved it around a little bit so that you can see the signature and the bottom of the paper. And I'm just going to make a few adjustments here and there. I added a little bit of shadow around the collar and 
going to blend a little bit around the around, around here so just a little bit of shadow here and there these are just some of the finishing touches I also felt that this part of the banks here needed to be a little bit darker so I added a touch of charcoal there as well and I uh, went over it with a brush a little bit more but the drawing is done I hope you enjoyed this drawing process don't forget to check out my other videos and don't forget to like and subscribe I'm gonna see you in the next one thanks for watching and bye for now